and basically, uh, uh, let's see, how do you make this go forward? There we go. So it's just being methodical, and uh, I'm showing you highlights of a few of the publications. And especially, how do you get there when this is a new technique and a new disease, and you're not an expert in that disease? I was, and still am a hematologist and a stem cell transplanter. I was never a neurologist. So the basic first approach was publication of the concept and the rationale for doing it in bone marrow transplant in 1995, followed by preclinical animal models. So there were two important ones we published, EAD and TMEB in blood. After that, began the clinical trials. And the very first one was 10 patients, three of which were MS, followed after that by our trial in blood where we reported failure. And I put the word failure in the title. And it was a failure because we treated secondary progressive MS. We were restricted by our advisory board to start there because we had done transplants for MS. And so we did start there, but actually the animal models predicted it would not work in secondary progressive, but it would work in relapse and remitting. It is, after all, a form of immune modulation, an immune reset, if you will. And so you want to treat an immune-mediated disease, not a neurodegenerative disease. Eventually, we got the right regimen and we're treating relapse and remitting patients and reported that in Lancet Neurology in 2009. That was only 21 patients, but we reversed neurologic disability, did it with one treatment, and no pharmaceutical drugs have been shown to do that. And that led to our next uh, publication in JAMA, which was 151 patients, and I want to show you our data on those 151s in terms of NEDA, N-E-D-A. And you can see in blue those 151 patients, as well as the study from Sweden with 41 and from the HALT regimen by the Fred Hutch of 25 patients. NADA means no evidence of disease activity. That is, no progression of disability, no clinical relapses, and no new or enlarging or enhancing lesions on MRI. No evidence of disease activity. What's remarkable is all three of these studies, they're not randomized, but all three at different centers, Sweden, Seattle, and Chicago, really had very similar natives. And they used different regimens. Seattle, of course, used BEAM, and I used Cytoxin A2G. How does that compare to drug therapy? Well, here are the drugs. Especially natalizumab, popolizumab, teclizumab, alentuzumab, or Trata. The interesting thing is most drug trials, they report one or two year, and very rarely do they report any longer. Transplanters, routinely report out to five years. But if you take a look at this, you can see that transplant seems markedly superior to all the drug trials. Nevertheless, these are not randomized trials. Perhaps there's something different about uh, the patients selected for transplant that gives superior results. But what I want to, what these data do is they give you an idea when you do a randomized trial, how many patients you need to do in each arm to show significance, because it appears the transplant in, for relapse remitting MS in three different centers was very similar results compared to all the drug trials. And in fact, although drug trials very rarely go beyond two years, this uh, Klein cohort from Harvard, where they followed 216 patients with various treatments, drug therapy, for seven years. At seven years of 216 patients, only 17 had no evidence of disease activity over that period of time. Um, but if you, I want you to focus in on four years. So from the Harvard trial, it's about 18% NADA, but all the transplant trials from these three different groups is 70%. So if we do a randomized trial and we follow out to four years, we're hoping transplant NADA, no evidence of disease activity, is 70%. Well, that of drugs is about 18%. If it's not, something's different. We perhaps did something wrong. And that's the basis for the randomized trial. That's the abstract here. In the randomized trial, we ran four centers, of course, in Chicago and America, University of Sheffield, with Johnson Olsen and Basel Chirac, uh, the uh, Uppsala University in Sweden with Professor Berman, and uh, the University of Sao Paulo in Ibero Preto with uh, Carolina Oliveira. Now that study is completed. Everybody's at least one year. They're one to five years. Actually, some are beyond five years. 
The median or mean is about three to 3.5 years. Remember, drug companies reported one at most two years. So our, our median is 3.5. Everybody's at least one year. And importantly, the evaluation was done by a blinded neurologist. So the evaluating neurologist did not know what arm they were on. Uh, we couldn't blind patients, obviously, but we could blind the neurologist. And this is the outline of the trial, of this multiple international stem cell transplant trial. The primary endpoint was EDSS. That's an increase in neurologic disability. We didn't choose NADA as a primary endpoint because almost all studies choose the EDSS. That is, progressive disability as their endpoint. And so we want to be consistent with the MS trials. And that's a one point or most more sustained increase in the EDSS for at least six months after at least one year of DMARD therapy. So we can't hit the endpoint unless we've had at least one year in the control arm of DMARD therapy. The statisticians figured we could do 110 patients because of the previous slide I just showed you. And this was relapse remitting EDSS between two to six, that's their disability. EDSS goes from zero to 10, 10 being death, zero, no evidence of disease. So this is kind of mid-range, two relapses in the prior 12 months. So that's considered very active MS, two relapses in the last 12 months. Randomized 55 to DMARD therapy, 55 to transplant. You can see our transplant arm is just cytoxin and ATG. The DMARD therapy, they got whatever the neurologist wanted to give them, 21 natalizumab, and you can see all the other drugs there. These aren't DMARDs, but they definitely got these drugs to try to help control the disease. Now, the drug trial companies, the initial ones, the control to the drug was placebo. In the recent ones, the control is interferon. These patients have much more stringent control. It's the reality of what they're treated with out there. Four patients withdrew on the control arm to get transplants in Mexico or in Russia. Three withdrew, one because before transplant had infections, and two were really secondary progressive. 51. DMARDs, 52 transplants. If you progress after one year, you could cross over. On the transplant arm, we have really no toxicity, no deaths, no grade four toxicity, no late opportunistic infections. And this was the key take home, the time to failure, EDSS failure. That's progressive neurologic disability of transplant versus DMARD therapy. And this was done by a blinded neurologist who didn't know which arm they were on as a very significant key value by a law of ranked analysis. <laughs> so here it is. Remember in the first year, nobody can fail. But if you look, it's pretty much a straight line of failure on continued drug therapy versus transplant. Of course, after transplant, you get no drug therapy. If we look in this first year where we compare the two arms, you can see the EDSS getting higher in the drug arm, going down, improving in the transplant arm. If you look on the MRI in T2 lesion volume, centimeters cubed, you can see the lesion volume in the brain is actually decreasing on the transplant arm and increasing significantly, 34% increase, 36% decrease on the transplant arm. On the control arm, it's increasing. And this is what I want to get back to, why I emphasize NADA. When we look at NADA, no evidence of disease activity, no relapses, no progression, no new or enlarging lesions, highly significant, the difference between transplant versus DMARD therapy. Now remember, I said at four years, the drug company should be about 18%, here they're zero to 5%, and this sh uh, should be about 70%, and we're 80%. So we even did better than anticipated. Why did we do better? It's because we took highly active disease, more than two relapses in the last year. A lot of the drug company trials were not highly active, they were relapsing and remitting. So this turned out to be highly effective and highly significant. And I wanted to end by giving thanks to Professor Dirk von Beckham. As you all know, we all in this room work too hard to be dedicated. And so to try to compensate, I'll sometimes I was able, when my children were younger, to take them on trips with me. And these are two of my children at dinner in the Netherlands with Professor Von Beckham. As you know, this crowd knows, Professor Von Beckham was a big advocate of transplant for autoimmune disease, including MS. He's done multiple animal preclinical models. And when I first started this, 
concept. There are only a handful, actually about five people in the world that supported it. Most people didn't, and Professor Ben Beckham was one of them. So while I'm honored to receive this award, I think it's also very equally a testimony to the vision of Professor Ben Beckham. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Bird. We move now to the Basic Science Award, uh, which is attributed this year to Dr. Fermin Sanchez Quijo from Spain. And uh, it will be uh, presented, uh, uh, to, it is supported by the Karat Network. And I'd like to invite Dr. Andrew Kaiser from Germany uh, to present the award. Yes, good evening. Um,